and there we have the sound of the famous white mammoth gavioli organ here at Pinkney's Green near Maidenhead and it's the Maybank holiday 2022 and I'm here with Mr Kevin Mears organ builder organ restorer and he's going to tell us a little bit about what's been done to the organ recently and a bit about its history. Kevin, hello. Hello, hello. Um, we started to do a few jobs on the organ for Tom Mayhew. Um, he bought the organ, I think, probably about five or six years ago now. Um, and it was just showing a few signs of being a bit worn out, really, after all the time it's, it's been working. Um, so we started doing some small jobs just to tidy things up and because of the Covid situation and the, the time we all had we managed to go through the whole organ now, re-leathered everything including the keyframe and there's been some work on the blower, needed a larger impeller. So in a way you'd say the, the Covid break was a quite fortuitous set of circumstances for this instrument well yes because it, it really left time with in between the fact that the organ didn't go out for two years it gave us time to do the work gradually and and steadily without stripping the whole thing down in one go well, she sounds in full-throated volume today yeah it's, it's been behaving very well these three days it's first time out so just come over to make sure everything was okay it seems to be so it's certainly been well received by the crowds yes and uh, there's families listening to it all different backgrounds people have never seen such a thing and just before this book they even gave it a round of applause around oh, the front wonderful so. wonderful yeah it's been must have been a very popular organ all its life to have survived really and the the white family must have really cherished it to have kept it and had it converted to 98 and that was fairly late on in the mid 20s it was converted so it was 112 key right up until then really tell us a bit about the uh, show organ society the people who've kept it going yes well it, george palmley was the the guy who first had the idea to well to rescue it really from barry island he didn't have a lot of funds behind him, but he took the organ on with a group of friends of his. Um, and without him and um, Norman Smith and Alan Curry, I think the organ, well, it would have been derelict probably uh, a long time ago. But they managed to keep it going and did an absolute sterling job looking after it, really, when you consider how big it is. And now having seen just exactly what makes it tick all credit to them for well for caring for it really on on very little with very little funding i would imagine too marvelous and in going through the organ you said earlier just how original and untrammeled it is yes it's just really hardly been changed and the fact that kiapas when they when they changed it to 98 they did very little to it then um, it was done on site, I think. It was. It's never been to London, so what they did um, is marvellous, really, because it, it's preserved everything that was there and could be used for '98. There's only the baritones, really, that have been added. So, could you tell us a little bit about the work you've done on the organ over the past couple of years? It's relays, pipe work, leathering, <laughs> the notorious triangle. <laughs> Let's hear, let's hear oh, yes. from you. <laughs> well, we started, the very first thing we had to do was the register box because it had started to fail completely. So we did that and then that led to the main relays. We did both of those um, and then gradually gone through the whole organ, chest by chest, really. The organ, it's, it's got two types of chests, a normal um, pouch and pallet and power motor chests, which are very, very quick acting and open very large ports for the extra large trombones and bass notes and to, to get all that um, in, together so that it all works at the same time it's been a marvel really and I've heard a lot said in the past about how these big gavioli organs weren't that successful but really the, the pneumatic action 
it's fantastic. It's really the, the absolute peak of their inventions, I would say. What is it that we haven't been hearing in years past that we can now, today, listen to inside the instrument? Um, well, I, th I think you've been here. I think everybody's heard it all. It's all been playing over the fashion, but perhaps sometimes not at the right moment. And there's always been a bit of a, a time lag with the violin section because it passed the the signal for that section passes through another relay, which seemed to put put it behind the organ. But we've um, even that up now, so it doesn't it doesn't have that time lag anymore. Tell us about the triangle and the castanets. <laughs> well, I it's, it, I was requested, or I had been requested, to have the castanets playing solo because they are quite a special part of the music of this organ, and the triangle was a bit overpowering, I, I imagine, playing with the castanets. So we've connected it through now with the trombone chant, so it only works in forte, but is connected to the bass drum for the moment. That may change, depends on <laughs> what people think about it really, but um, it's a bit more musical now, I think. Yeah, we've been listening to it all afternoon here on the grass, many of us, and you can listen to it all afternoon. It, it is like a, a concert band on a old-fashioned yeah. concert stage. It's exactly what it was designed to do, to be an automatic orchestra, really. And in looking through the instrument's music library, what have you discovered? Ah, well, there's some real gems, and also books that we've known for years um, suddenly have new parts in them that you've never been aware of before because the organ has perhaps missed them or you've been, other parts have been more prominent. So it's been a real revelation actually. It certainly is. And one final question, what are you going to do with the chimes? There's news that they might be yes, reappearing, the orchestral chimes. Yeah, there is talk that once this settles down that we can put the chimes back in. Um, but the register's there for them, so it would make sense. It was a, a big part of this organ sound in its day, so yeah, I would be up for doing that, definitely. Well, I take my hat off to you, and I take my hat off to the owner, <laughs> um, and for what you've done for organ preservation here. This is one of the most beloved instruments in the country. Oh, yes, um, it's and what's nice is to be here at Carter's and to see young families and young kids who've never seen anything like this, just simply enjoying the music and dancing around in the sunshine in front of it. Really, that's probably what it's all about. Yeah, it is. It really is. And when you think of it, Tom Mayhew and his family, they've been behind the, the job all the way from the beginning. And from my, my point of view, suddenly having to tell somebody that this needs to be done and that work needs to be done is always a bit of a daunting task, but they've stood by it all the way through and gone with everything I've suggested. And my team at work, Paul Davis, Ben Ely, and Jeremy, Bryce and Lynn Bryce, we've all worked, well, very hard really to to get it up to this stage now. Jeremy and Lynn have been concentrating on repairing some of the old Godin and Marenghi books, which uh, again are uh, back with the organ. So it's been a, a real team effort all round. Well, let's get back to the music. Thank you very much for uh, giving us the lowdown on this historic instrument. And uh, we take our hat off to you oh, and well, you. Mr. Mayhew, the owner, for returning this to its former glory uh, in well, this great nation. And we mustn't forget the White family, George Palmley and Alan Curry and, and Norman Smith. Without them we wouldn't be having this conversation now. Thank you very much and back we go to Pinkney's and we're going to hear more from Whites in just a moment.